There is nothing I hate more than Tilt. I see Tilt as a demon. Tilt has tried to make me quit Astro several times since I started. So the worst of the worst though, and you're going to hate me for this, is that I've had a magnificent telescope hidden um, in the closet for two years due to Tilt. Yes, I tried this scope once I got it, but I realized the Tilt was insane, and I haven't been able to fix it since. It's been two years. So that telescope is the Raza 8, which is F2. So at F2, uh, fixing tilt is a task that might make you want to give up on life. Uh, after two years of wasted nights, I decided it was time to get the best possible tilt adjustment accessory that I could uh, and finally fix the tilt. So what you see uh, by the camera here is the ASG photon cage. And it is pricey, but it's considered one of the best, uh, if not the best, tilt adjustment um, plate, I would say, available uh, today. So the main reason for that is that it has four uh, tilt adjustment screws and not just three, like on most other uh, tilt adjustment plates, which is one per corner. So you have four corners and you have four screws, which is great. Uh, and you can also adjust the back focus uh, using the following cage, which is great too. So you have three screws for uh, the back focus and, and you can move up or down and uh, that helps you reach back focus very simply. So the screws are all extremely precise and the cage is very well built overall. So in this video, we're going to uh, show you how it came in the box really quick and we'll try to fix the tilt on the Raza and uh, see if we can get something right. And hopefully yes. So here is what I received in the box. Two small boxes, one extra package here, and then two papers explaining how to assemble and use the tilt adapter. Okay, and here we have everything on the table out of the packages. So we have two filter holders over here, that's for the RASA, and we have uh, the assembly here, which I'm going to take care of right now. And here is the cage mounted on the camera. So hopefully everything was done correctly, I'm, I'm hoping. And of course, I made a mistake. So as you can see here, the camera is sticking out and it should not. So the reason why I wasn't able to push it all the way down is because I forgot to take off the tilt plate on the actual camera. And I did not realize until two nights after, so a pretty big waste of time. So make sure you remove this plate if you intend to use a camera on the photon cage. So in this video, you're going to see a few clips where the camera is sticking out. But that's because those videos were taken on night one or night two. But I did fix this issue uh, after a while. So I can change the back focus on the top here and the tilt on the bottom here. And I really like how there is uh, icons for everything. And then here on the bottom is where you can put a filter if you want to. So hopefully everything will go fine on the next clear night. So you can see on night one, uh, before touching anything, what my tilt looked like here. And it's just horrible. As you can see, the left side is all blurry, the right side has a bunch of elongated stars. It's just horrible and there's no way you can image anything like this. And here you can see a graph of the shape of the stars. And uh, yeah, it's just a complete nightmare. And that's how it's been for two years. So the way you fix tilt, at least on Nina, is by using the Hocus focus um, plugin and this is a great plugin because it also has a tilt slash back focus feature uh, to help you fix those and you can see on my screen here what it looks like so it gives you uh, some numbers some values uh, with some graphs and a, a map so it's a bit difficult to read but um, um, ASG made a, a nice video about this so you can go and look um, but I'm just going to go over very quick so here, as you can see, I have made three attempts so far. And so by looking at the table here, it gives you some values for each corner in numbers. Those are the error numbers. Don't care too much about the actual numbers. What you want to look at is which one is the largest number, uh, so the largest error. So it tells you here, if it's a positive value, you have to move away from the objective. So what I did was I looked for the largest positive number each time and I would go to that corner and push the tilt adjustment screw. I would always change two adjacent screws. If I pushed one screw in, so to go away from the center, 
I would also loosen the adjacent screw. And you have to also make sure your four locking screws are unlocked when you do this and then lock them again just because if you don't, you might force one side in too much. Um, yeah, so it's a bit, it's, it's definitely not easy at first. Uh, so it takes some practice. It took me several nights to get it right, but I kept trying and trying. Sometimes I would make it 10 times worse and that's because the screws are super, super, super sensitive. And at F2, it's just insane how sensitive it is. So you would think that turning a screw like 1 8 is nothing, but when you take a new test shot, the whole image is completely different. So be very careful if you're also using a fast scope. So I tried this, like I said, several nights in a row. Uh, luckily I had a streak of clear nights, but I, it was very tiring, it was very difficult, but at least now I feel confident that I can do it again with pretty much any scope. So I think if I were to do this on my F5 refractor, it would be so, so easy. But at F2 is definitely hard. And special thanks to my friend Patrick who came uh, for a night to help me out and who is the one that realized that I had to remove the tilt plate on the actual camera. So here you can see a few screenshots taken from the graph the eccentricity graph uh, showing you a bit of my progress over the nights uh, with the shape of the stars. So of course you don't want any red stars, you want everything to look as green as possible and as run as possible. Uh, you can see it's getting better and better, yet it's not perfect at the end, but um, at f2 I am too scared to keep trying, so I think it's just fine enough. So you can see a test shot here, and uh, as you can see, I mean, one side is a bit elongated, but I think it's fine. I'm going to go out in the desert very soon to uh, actually image all night with a telescope and we'll see. But um, I think I'm happy enough uh, with this result. But yeah, that was uh, the result of a few different nights trying my best to get it right. So I'm honestly not sure if I'll try getting the stars to be perfectly round or leave it as is. At F2, I'm very scared to make it worse, so yeah, I don't know if it's worth the risk or not. Uh, one thing is certain though, my next plan is to use the photon cage to fix the tilt on the refractor telescope, which is currently at UDRO. By the way, uh, season 4 of the Galactic course will be all about how to do remote imaging, so if you want to learn about this, um, make sure to check it out. And so it's a perfect time to fix it once and for all. And at F5, I think it's going to be much, much easier to get perfectly round stars. And I have no doubt at all that um, the photon cage here will be able to achieve round stars at F5. Very simple. So if you want the photon cage, you can go on the website, which is asgastronomy.com. Um, I might have a link below somewhere. But um, yeah, this is, uh, once again, a bit pricey, but I think for fast optics and especially you know, cameras that are uh, sensitive to tilt and full frame cameras, this uh, really is a, an important um, thing to have to get round stars. So we'll go more in depth about this in our uh, course for season four and we might also make another video later for uh, the refractor telescope and show you the stars once we get them fixed. So we'll see you guys next time and class guys.